uh, I take this as an honor to be able to be here on the first day of the year, begin the year in worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jody and I were riding down the road yesterday, and uh, it was yesterday afternoon. It was a church down in Tekoa. Uh, you could see from the road and the parking lot. I looked over and I said, they must be having watch night service. She looked at me like, what in the world are you talking about? And I said, well, that's when you come together and you do church on Christmas, on New Year's Eve, and you just preach all the way through the night, you know, until midnight, then you go home, wake everybody up and send them home. And I said, I preached in a couple of those. Those were always real fun. And then we saw a hearse there and said, oh, no, it's just a funeral. <laughs> I've been to a few watch night services that were like a funeral, too, but. It's good to be able to come and to, uh, to sing of our Lord who uh, God sent for us, who was crucified for us, but He's resurrected for us, that He lives for us, He's watching over us, He prays for us, every, everything of every day, he, he is there for us, what a God we have and we serve. And I, I, I don't do resolutions. I, 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 I decided that was, that was uh, trying to lie on purpose. Amen? Amen. <laughs> And I didn't want to do that. But a uh, long time ago, um, I decided that uh, I would let the Lord give me a word. And that would be a focus for me for the whole year. That uh, I can't learn everything. But if I could just open my ears and, and let my eyes see the things that the Lord has for me, uh, He could teach me some things and, and to put focus on it. And God's done some uh, great works in my life just to take a whole year to take one facet of the Christian life and just kind of dig down and, and grow from that. And I have my word. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but uh, we've already talked about it today, which was a, a nice confirming word for me. I hope you have one too. If not, think about it. What is it that in your life that you would like to see God do in your life? What work would you like to see him either refresh or maybe just to instigate? Maybe there's a facet of the Christian life that uh, you need to grab a hold of and learn from. And, and, and this relationship is, that we have with God, it's, it's just so special that the God of the universe could want to speak with us and, and spend time with us. How honored we should be. Really. And salvation is not just a one-time decision. It, it, it is a decision that affects eternity. Amen. But it doesn't stop there. It's, it's the beginning. And, and as, as hard as we chased after God in our salvation, through repentance, through belief, through faith, through trust, we need to do that the rest of our, our, our time here on earth. We need to seek after that salvation, live that salvation, grow in that salvation. It's, a, it's another milestone we're facing, 2023. How many of y'all thought we'd get there? Rick didn't, evidently. It took him four years to get to the freshman year of high school. 2020 started with such promises. We, we, I always start the year with a, something that I, I kind of want to set the tone and that year we had done our five core values. Y'all remember those? Uh, we, we talked about worship. We talked about evangelism. We talked about discipleship. We talked about fellowship. And we talked about service. That was the core values that this church had already decided. And, and I think those are absolutely wonderful things. And we dug down on those and we studied those. And, and we said, these are our values. And then everything got challenged in 2020. We had to look at absolutely everything fresh. There was a distraction that came in, some unexpected circumstances that I don't know why, but it got us off mission. We had never been there before. 2021 was a time of readjusting to our new reality. People wanted it to be like it used to be, but uh, that never can happen. Uh, you never can look forward by looking back. Uh, I was watching the ball game last night, and one of our players took off running, and wasn't anybody close to him. 
And he kind of took a turn to look and see if anybody was chasing him. He tripped on the 10-yard line. They called it the turf monster, I believe, something like that. Just that, I mean, just jumped up and tripped him right there because he was going one direction, but he was looking in another direction. That doesn't work, folks. And we need to make sure that we never do that. We need to look at all the things that God has for us, and we need to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. These are the situations. This is the circumstances. And let us rejoice and be glad because we have a God no matter our circumstances. He is with us to help us. 2022, we just said amen to last night. It was a difficult year for me. It began for me hard in 2021, but it kind of moved into 2022, and, and I was challenged in, in a lot of areas of my life, and I decided that I needed to make sure that I prioritized listening in my life. And all through 2022, I wanted to make sure that I was listening, listening to God, amen, listening to you, amen listening to everything that my circumstances were trying to say to me, Every, not, not trying to twist my circumstances to where I am, what, where I wanted them to be, but just took them for what they were and put a God smile on my face and move forward. That's a good thing. And that, that, that was a tough year for me, but and, and especially as a leader because you really want your leader to know where you're going. Right? How can and, and by the way, we're going to heaven. I don't know if it's today or not. Neither do you. Uh, a person that my wife uh, works in the same building with, Lynn had a really close relationship with this young lady. I think she was 37. Is that right? 37, 38. 38, just a, a, a Christian on fire with the Lord, always, always talking of the things of the Lord. Uh, her husband had some health issues. Her son just uh, got his driver's license, uh, 16 years old, has a girl in, in, in middle school. And um, Jared actually had been working with her on her computers and getting everything just right. And uh, closing out the year, she was a legal secretary and uh, always called home, or excuse me, always called her boss at five o'clock, who's an attorney, just to tell him everything that was going on. And she didn't call that day and he called and she didn't answer. So he called her husband and said, go check. And she had actually seen someone in the parking lot, had gone back in and uh, had a cough, kind of a lingering cough, but her husband walked in and found her dead. You don't know what's around the corner, except you know God's around the corner. There is a term that we mention a lot at Christmas. He is Emmanuel, which means, aren't you glad? Don't we need him? Even when you don't know that you need Him, you need Him. And there are things that are beyond our control, but they're not beyond His. Sometimes when everything is upside down, aren't you grateful that the right side up God is there watching over us? So we just need to know that God hasn't moved off the throne. He is sovereign over all. And as long as he's on the throne and I'm not on the throne, things are good. And if there are disruptions, if there are circumstances, if there are difficulties, they're not too difficult for him. And evidently, he has allowed them to happen to us. And we believe Scripture that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So if God's not upset about it and he's got a plan in it, what should we do? That's really what I want to talk to you about. I've been asking God, what's next? I've been doing my dead level best to listen, to move myself out of the way and seek what His Spirit is doing in our midst. 
And I begin to see that the early church had the very same issues that we had. When Jesus was on the earth, his ministry was among people, and there was a buzz among the people. The teaching ministry of Jesus was on fire. It was challenging sinners. It was changing hearts. Sickness was gone. I mean, whenever he met a need, he quenched the need. That's the kind of God that we had. Everywhere that he went, Judea, Samaria, Galilee, Phoenicia, Decapolis, Perea, Idumea, Arabia, everywhere that he was, his preaching ministry, his life of, life of serving the people, making himself known to the people, the kingdom of God is at hand. It was working, but it led to a place called Calvary where he was humiliated and killed, brutally killed. But yet with a smile on his face, he gave his life. They could not take it, but he gave it freely. The body was a sacrifice, a sacrifice for you and for me. And we needed to face death in victory. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He faced death in victory and defeated death and overcame all those circumstances and gave us life. And as he promised, he came to give it and give it abundantly. And that's where we are. But then he was with them for 40 days. And then he walked up on this mountain and raised his hands. And as I always say, the law of gravity was suspended and Jesus was ascended. And he went back to glory. And what a day that must have been in heaven. Now, the disciples were there. Others, maybe even as many as 120 were there. And they asked this question, what now? The one that we've been walking with, the one that we've been listening to, the one who met needs and conquered the needs, he's not here. What do we do now? He's left us a commission. We're to go forth and be witnesses he says in, in Acts chapter 1, by the way, if you don't have your Bible, you can head to Acts chapter 1. And let me read with you the Word of God beginning in verse number 6. Acts 1 verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked Him, saying, Lord, will You at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in His own authority. Church, look at me. There's a lot of things it's not for you to know. We're on an as-need-to-know basis. And really, as long as He's on the throne, that's what we need to know. As long as not only is He on the throne, but you've made a decision to let Him be in your heart, and you have salvation full and free. That's what you need to know. And that you've been called to live a life, by the way, His life on earth. So He says in the next verse, but you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And when He's saying you to them, He means you to us as well. Power. Power. Deutimus. Overcoming overwhelming power. It's the same word that we get our word dynamite from. You got a problem, you got an issue, you got an obstacle. When the power comes, the obstacle goes away. Do you have problems, circumstances, issues? Well, then let the power come. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the age. He gave the commission, you know it well, in Matthew 28, verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, what's it say? I will be with you. Say it. 
always, even until the end of the earth. He'll be with us. That's what you need to know. Our God, the God of salvation, is there. So their leader's not there now. They've been given a commission, and they were saying, what do we do? So they did what he told them to do, stay together. And they came from that time when Jesus ascended. I, I, I say that they just looked around at each other and kind of hop, skipped, and jumped their way back down to Jerusalem. And they, they, they went to that place, and what a wonderful place it was. Look in verse 9. When he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? I think today he may would look at us and say, Why are you just sitting around gazing? Isn't there something to do? He said in verse 11, This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Hey, he's coming back. There's something we need to be doing until he comes back. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a, a Sabbath day journey. That's about three quarters of a mile. So they went hop, skipping, and jumping. I mean, just what would you have been thinking if you just saw Jesus just move up and ascend back to glory. How many of y'all would have been jumping? Amen? Scared me to death one time. My very first church I was at, the youth had gone to camp, Mark, and, and they had learned something in camp. So they were doing their, their presentation to the church, and they weren't sitting in the pews like everybody else. They were down here sitting on the floor. And one of the Youth came up there, and, and they were talking about all the things that they did. And all of a sudden, all the youth, they were on cue. They just jumped up. And I think half the congregation thought we were going to heaven that day. And I thought I was going to have a heart attack right then and there. And they said, rapture practice. Maybe we need to do that, right? Y'all want to get up? No, I'm just kidding. I don't jump like I used to. I think now I kind of go, that's about it. Could you imagine what it would have been like when they just saw him go? You think any of them jumped? Their heart was beating. They run back. What do we do now? They came together. Look what it said. Verse number 13. And when they had entered, they went into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, the son of James, and they and these all, come on now, continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They all continued, continued. What they had been doing, they continued. They didn't stop to do something else. They continued. Earlier, Peter said, I'm going fishing. But Jesus met him there and said, there's a work to do. Do you love me, Peter? Go feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Go feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. They continue. They didn't stop. They go back. I remember a time in Jesus' ministry when Jesus was preaching very hard at them. And it was some very difficult things for them to, to take in and to understand. And, and, and Jesus is saying, unless you drink my blood and eat my body, you, you can't be a part of me. And they're like, that does not make sense. And then here's the phrase, Matthew 6, or excuse me, I believe it's John 6, 66 says this, and they returned and went back and did not follow him any longer. I wonder if there are going to be some obstacles or difficulties where we're going to be challenged to go back and quit. I think maybe that happened with COVID with some people. Maybe during that time where they had to reevaluate what church was, 
and what church meant to them. And they were thinking about what they were going to do or not do. Maybe some went back. But the disciples came together and they continued. Here's the phrase we're going to be looking at. One accord. One accord. One accord. Ten of the twelve times that this phrase is used in the Bible, it's in the book of Acts. It's a compound word. If you look at it, in the Hebrew, you basically break it down into two words and you put them together. The first word means to rush along. But the second word of this compound word means in unison. You go forward, you rush along to do the work, but you do it in unison. Now y'all look up here. Did it say that they did it individually? Would it be easier just to take care of yourself? Just handle your own stuff? Do it the way you feel is best for you? That would be easier. Would y'all agree? But they rushed along together in unison. There was a bond. They had been through some things. They had a common testimony. They had a common faith. They had a common belief and a common trust. Now, you and I both know that Satan at that point would have loved to just scatter them. And if they had, that would have been very bad. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You stay together and you pray. So that prayer is when we are coming with God and joining with God. And we're, we, we move into the presence of God. We speak, listen now, and we hear. And God speaks, and He hears us. And in prayer, we have this great relationship. Did you hear me? Relationship. Where, where we and God get to come together. And when the people were doing this in prayer, there was something that happened. A bond moved among them, greater than it had been before. Before, they were watching and listening, but now they were having to be active participants. They couldn't just watch what Jesus was doing. He's in heaven. So now they're connecting with him in prayer and in supplication. The word supplication means with great passion and need, you bear your heart. They had this question, what now? Well, let's ask the one who knows. What do we do? Well, let's make sure that we're doing this with him. He was their leader. He was the one who set the tone. He was the one that set the direction. Every army needs a leader. Would you agree? But every army needs to come together with passion and need and go forward together. One accord. To go forward rapidly, but do it in unison. This building is a great picture of this. I mean, everything that you see in this building is different. From two by fours to carpet, chandeliers and light bulbs, they all have a purpose. They're all different. The, the primer has to go on before the paint. Y'all got it? But look at what happens when they all come together. This word one accord, mark you like this, it's almost like a musical tone. Now, I can't do it, so I'm not going to do it. But if I was over here 
all these keys are, are different. Would y'all agree? And you can press, hey, it is on. You press one note and you get a clear tone. And it's an expected tone. I probably couldn't do the same thing because I don't know what note I just hit. But it's there. But, but when they all work together in unison, great music happens. In the same pitch, in the same tone, all together, different, but together. And what makes it even special is when the master, oh, when he can play it. Right? I mean, I can give my granddaughter a little toy piano, and it won't be the master. But the one who can play it unbelievably, amazingly. So what he does is, I'm a note, you're a note. Some of y'all are sharp. Others are a little flat. But he likes to come together and tune us. And when he puts us together on pitch and he starts playing this thing, we become in one accord. And y'all listen to this phrase. Oh, what? God can do. That's the church. That's the church. You know, they, they take the book, The Acts of the Apostles. That's what the title of this book is, The Acts. So, I mean, we shorten, we just say Acts. Well, literally, it's the actions of the apostles. Y'all got that? And, and I was being so clever when I started thinking of this. I said, what, what, what's my title going to be? And I thought, the actions of New Holland. See, I'm real smart that way, you know. I'm so original, right? But literally, it's the actions of Ed Cooper. And it's the actions of Jim Mills. And Rinda. And Doug. And Susan. But yet, hold on, when the collective people come together and all of our actions come together in one accord, oh, what God can do. Now, we'll get to chapter 2 next week. That, that's, that's next week. But understand, the battle is lost or won in the secret place of the will our will before God. Is it my will or is it God's will? Is it God's strength or is it my desire? Is it God's wisdom or is it my thoughts? Is it God's truth or is it my feelings? The battle is won or lost in the secret place of our will before God. That's why prayer comes together when we humble ourselves before the Almighty and, and, and we start to, to move into His grace, into His mercy, into His love. I think I just lost you. Just because we're not there doesn't mean we shouldn't be there. Maybe there's been a point in time in our life when we were, but wouldn't it be good to get back to that one accord now? Now, we know that Satan comes to divide and conquer. Say amen. Satan always attacks relationships, correct? Because the one thing he doesn't want is us to be of one accord. Church, look at me. In the coming year, we need to listen to God. We need to listen to God's Spirit among us. The Word of God is God speaking. It may have been written down, but it's God's actual voice for us. And we need to, to bind together in prayer. And we need to lift up each other. Because some, there's some things that we don't know that we need to know. And there's a work that we don't know all the ramifications of it, but we need to be willing to passionately come together and be in one accord together. We can do it together. or we will fail together. But don't be 
worried about weakness. Because what is it God's Word says about weakness? When we are weak, say it, get, say it together. We are strong. Say it together. We are strong. But you got to get weak first. What God can do. I think about Genesis 32. And in Genesis 32, there's a guy by the name of Jacob. And he's coming home. And his brother that he cheated, is he finds out his brother's coming. And his brother's got a whole caravan of men with him. We would call it a, a small army. Here Jacob is, and he's got his wives and his concubines and all the kids and all that he's earned and all that he's, everything in his life. And as he's getting to that place, he goes and he, he, puts, he puts everything that he has on one side of the creek, a little small river, and he goes on the other side by himself and he lays down to sleep. And Jesus says, I think it's time to have a conversation with this boy. Theophany, Jesus comes back. He surprises him. They begin to wrestle. And they wrestled all night. I'm sure there were some times that Jacob thought he was winning because he had a hold of him. But God was saying, don't turn me loose. Maybe there were some times he was trying to get away from him. And Jesus grabbed a hold of him. And Jesus said, I'm not going to turn you loose. And they wrestled with all night. And he was changed. He was changed. He was Jacob, but now he's Israel. He was the schemer, but now he's the one who's going to lead the 12 tribes of Israel. I want you to know that wrestling match, please hear this, they were in one accord. They may have had two different perspectives, but they were together in one accord. And the Lord won. Oh, Jacob came out with a limp. and He carried that limp the rest of his life. But that's okay. He was a new person. I also think about the time when old Joshua crossed over the Jordan River and he's, on a, he's out checking out Jericho. He's looking around to see all that he was going to be facing there. And he sees this great warrior with his sword drawn. Well, Joshua wasn't no dummy. He looked at him and said, whose side are you on? Are you for us? Or are you for them? If you're for us, amen. If you're for them, oh my. And this, the soldier of the Lord, the army, the, the, the angel of the Lord said, I'm not on your side and I'm not on their side. I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. Look, it's not us battling each other. God will come, but when he comes, he didn't come to join you or to fight against you. He came to take over and lead you. All I got to say is as long as he's leading, we're all right. We're okay. The battle is the Lord's. And no weapon formed against us will prosper. Y'all got that? So let the negativity go. Tell Satan to be quiet. Tell him that 
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. Tell us that the mighty army of God is when we come together, and it doesn't matter the foe. If David can slu- slay, slay, slew, sling, sling, if he can whip old Goliath, we got hope. Amen? And if you don't know Jesus, you're in trouble. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 says this, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs. I take pleasure in persecutions and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If you don't know Jesus, the battle doesn't belong to the Lord. The battle is on you. And you will not make it. Give me 15 more seconds and let me say this. I know people who have fought with this and fought with this and fought with this and fought with this and fought with this. Why are you fighting when eternity, when joy and peace and love can be there? Why don't you just repent and receive the greatest gift that can be given, the the gift that will change you from now and for eternity? Why can't we just let go of our pride and our ego and that which separates and just come and receive the gift, the greatest gift, a holy gift of salvation. And yet, you and I both know people who have fought with that and fought with that and fought with that rather than just surrendering. It all begins with surrendering. Oh, what God can do. Church, i got two words for you. One accord.